Hi, Mr. Moss here. In our last video, I was introducing to you how you can estimate quotients using multiples. This is estimating quotients with multiples to the sequel. This is our Academy Award winning uh, sequel to the first video, where I was walking you through the process of how to solve a problem kind of like this, 283 divided by five. Remember that we have the dividend, the divisor, and then the quotient is the answer. It's going to go over here. And we're talking about how we can figure out an estimated quotient using our understanding of multiples. So I'm going to kind of write some multiplication problems backwards here. I'm trying to figure out essentially what times 5 is going to equal something that's pretty close to 283. And I'm thinking right now, I know that 5 times 10 is 50. Uh, 5 times... Uh, 5 times 100 is 500. That's quite a bit too big. Let's try 5 times, gee, let's try 5 times 50. 5 times 50 is going to be 250. That's going to get us pretty close to it. And maybe for our next one, let's try, again, we're working with easy numbers, so I'm not going to worry about 5 times 51 or 5 times 52. I'm going to jump up to 5 times 60. 5 times 60 equals 300. 250 is a little bit lower than 283. And 300 is a little bit higher than 283. So I know that I've got an appropriate range here. So I can just change my numbers here. I can rewrite those as, I wish I'd left myself a little more room here, 250 divided by 5 equals 50. And likewise, 300 divided by 5 equals 60. So I know that my quotient has to be somewhere in between 50 and 60. That's my estimated quotients. And that's exactly where this name comes from. I'm estimating quotients using multiples. In this case, multiples of 5. Well, Today I'm going to show you how to solve the same problem, but we're going to kind of streamline this a little bit. We're going to make this a little bit more simplified because the idea is that using the previous strategy, you learned how to do it. You learned why it worked. Today we're just going to look at a more streamlined approach to being able to get us the answer. So if we take a look right over here, we've got 283 divided by 5. What we're going to ask ourselves is what's a division fact that's pretty close to this? And to be able to round this quickly and easily, we're just going to look at the first two digits here. So what's something close to 28 divided by 5? And hopefully this is something that we can look at pretty quickly and uh, identify. I know that I could come up with... 25 divided by 5, that equals 5. Or I could do 30 divided by 5, and that equals 6. Now the reality is we got these by rounding. 283, that can round down not to 25, but to 250. And likewise, 283 rounds up not to 30, but to 300, that's 10 times bigger. So we're still dividing by five, but in each of these examples, our answer is 10 times greater. So it's gonna be 250 divided by five equals 50, or 300 divided by five equals 60. And it's gonna fall somewhere in between those two. Now you'll notice that's exactly what we did in the last example. I'm just organizing this a little bit differently. It's a little quicker for me to do the math out and to structure it. Uh, and when I look, by the way, at 283, is that closer, if I look at 28, let's say, is that closer to 25 or 30? Well, I know that 28 is closer to 30 than it is to 25. So 283 is going to end up being closer to 300. So that's going to tell me that my estimate is going to be pretty close to 60. My estimated quotient is going to be pretty close to 60. Let's take a look at this example right here. 5,472 divided by 7. So now we're looking at some larger numbers here. I'm going to use the same strategy. I'm just going to look at my first two digits, and I'm going to find a base fact that's close to 54 
divided by 7. So I need something close to 54 divided by 7. Well, let me think of my multiples of 7. I know that 7 times 6 equals 42. We're getting closer to 54. 7 times 7 is 49. Now we're getting uh, a bit closer here. So I'm going to put that down. I'm going to say 49 divided by 7 equals 7. And I also know that if I go higher, 7 times 8 is, oh, 56. So I'm going to do 56 divided by 7 equals 8. I was able to use my base facts here to be able to help me out. Now, again, we know 5,472 can round uh, up to, uh, I'm sorry, can round down here to 4,900 if we're looking for our compatible numbers, or it can round up to 5,600. Again, we're adding in two zeros. That's because they're 100 times greater, so I'm going to add those same two zeros right over here. And that's telling me that my estimated quotient is going to be between 700 and 800. And when I look right here, I know that 5,472, that's pretty close to 56, 000, I'm sorry, to 5,600. So that's telling me that of these two, sometimes you're going to be asked to find two possible estimates that the real answer is in between. And if that's the case, I've done that. My estimated quotients are between 700 and 800. But if it asks you for just one estimate, I'd have to go with this estimate as being the closest possible one because again 5472 is much closer to 5600 than it is to 4900 let's do another one here 756 divided by 9 so again looking in those first two spots and i'm coming up with something that's close to 75 divided by 9 so I need to figure out what is something close to 75 divided by 9. I know that, uh, let's see, 9 times 8, oh, 9 times 8 is 72. So if 9 times 8 is 72, then I can say 72 divided by 9 equals 8. And I know that 9 times 9 is 81. So 81 divided by 9 equals 9 right here. Once again, I need to recognize that I'm working with a number in the hundreds place. I have one more place value that I need to account for. So I'm just going to put that in. And that's showing me that my estimates, if I'm coming up with two estimated quotients, I'm looking at either 80 or 90, somewhere in that range. But if I have to pick what it's closer to, 756 is definitely, uh, well, it's actually pretty close to uh, both of them. It's going to be somewhere in the middle, but it is closer to 720 for sure. So it's telling me that if I have to choose one particular estimate, I'm going to probably go with the estimate of 80 as being closer. Let's take a look at one last problem. Holy mackerel, this is a big one, 28,206. My point in coming up with this bigger number is to show you that it doesn't really matter how big it is because the same strategy is going to work for all of these. So if I choose my first two numbers, 28, and I'm dividing by 3, I want a division problem that's close to 28 divided by 3. And by the way, I had a, a student uh, today who said, well, what about 28 divided by 4? That wasn't his exact example, but his point was that we could round the divisor as opposed to rounding the dividend. And, and you know, his point was well taken. 28 divided by 4, we can solve. That's very close. But really what we're focusing on is rounding the dividend, rounding that total number, because once you start changing the divisor, that's going to have a huge impact on your quotient, on your answer. So we really want to leave the divisor alone, uh, divided by 3 here. We're not going to change that. We want something close to 28 divided by 3. I know that 27 divided by 3... I know that 9 times 3 is 27, so 27 divided by 3 equals 9. I know that 30 divided by 3 equals 10. The only thing I have to figure out now is how many place values I'm adding in. 
ones, tens, and hundreds, because this is a thousand times greater. 28 is, of course, a thousand times greater. I'm sorry, 28,000 is a thousand times greater than just 28. So I need to add in my three zeros. Not only to my rounded dividends, but also to my rounded quotients. Got those commas here. And so here we can see that my answer, uh, my quotient, is going to be pretty close to either 9,000 or 10,000, somewhere in between if I'm coming up with a range. And if I need to come up with one that's really precise, well, let's see. 2,700 is pretty close to 28. I'm sorry. Let me read that number again. 27,000 is pretty close to 28,206. And it's really quite uh, in between the two of these, but it's definitely closer to 27,000, which means that my estimate, if I have to pick one, is going to be close to about 9,000. So you should see, hopefully, that this is building on the strategy we looked at last time where we were working with our multiplication problems in more detail. But in this example, we're really able to go straight to the division problems using those same basic facts. This has been Mr. Moss uh, showing you the sequel to estimating quotients with multiples. And I hope this was a helpful guide for you. Have a great day.